Lynetta, thank you so much for the flowers up here. You're welcome. Mr. Steve, are you ready to preach? Okay. All right, turn with me to Proverbs 31 that Rebecca just read. We want to think of Mother's Shop. Our kitchen always had cupboards. Sometimes they were full of food. Sometimes they were half full. And sometimes they are starchly bare. But my mother always had faith that somewhere along the line, provisions would be made. And I remember during those depression days that people went from door to door as they were walking through town seeking jobs. And they'd come to the back door and knock on the door. They wanted a sandwich. And my mother said, I'm, I'm sorry, I only have enough for my son and myself. And she turned him away, but she had a tear in her eye. Mother's shop was empty, and we couldn't fulfill a need. Those were, for many people, tough days. There are tougher days ahead, I suppose, but they are pretty tough for that time. And so we come to the concept of what's the position of a wife in a home? What authority does she have? She has one big thing that is always hard to deal with. How am I to be submissive to my husband? And the answer is, you just do it. And I said to one lady once, I said, you're looking at one part of the scripture. So you have a half glass that's full. I says, the other part of it is that your husband to be, has to be ready to die for you. Now, let me ask you, is what you are going to be asked to do in preparing meals and that sort of thing and be under his ultimate jurisdiction, is that harder than bowing down and following him? And one lady said to me, if my husband told me that he'd be willing to die for me, I wouldn't be going through divorce. And that's the way life is. We, we look at life as a part and parcel. And we want things to go our way. And if they don't go our way, we wonder, why isn't God blessing us in that direction? Well, God does give us the ideas that are, are true and right in the sight of God. And God deals with us in a way that he brings glory to those who have the pattern that they're going to follow after God. Any man is a fool who thinks he's going to run the house by himself. It isn't going to be done. Sometimes the dishes are going to go to the next day. And sometimes they don't get done the next day, so they go to the third day. And they begin to realize that life just isn't that equal. And they begin to share of things in life. But God says to us that women have a very vital ministry in our life. They give to us ideas that we hadn't thought about before. And God paints a picture in Proverbs 31 that says that a woman has a vital place in the life of a household. She has care of kids. She has care of the kitchen. She has care of organizing cleaning. 
all of those things kind of fall on her life. Sometimes it's fair, sometimes it isn't fair. A man comes home tired from work. And I remember in days when we had gasoline wars in the city, I'd be on the phone for 10 hours and I'd come home to my family. My wife, I'd walk in the back door and she'd be cooled down by the hot air of the house because we didn't have air conditioning. And the boys would be ready to say hi and dad would be all worn out and I'd sit down in a chair and said, give me five minutes and I'll meet with you. Because I had been trying to get reasonable fares at gasoline pumps all day long and you get tired. So we have in Proverbs 31 the ideal mother and all that she does for the authority of the house. You notice that in verse 20 and 21, she went out and worked with her, with her hands. And then she went out and hired and got food to give to the poor. And she reached forth her hands to help the needy. In those days of the 1930s, we didn't have electric washers, or at least most people didn't. And a lot of those were done by hand. They needed the bread before they baked it so it would be good. They would get up early in the morning before dawn and they would go out shopping and get prepared for the day. They would go shopping for the material that would make the clothes that they're going to wear. And they did a good job of it. And so they came to the very place that they had an important part in the life of the house. The lady went out into the fields and she saw a field that was up for sale. She had the money, her husband had given her the money. So she bought the field, she put corn and other products into the field, and she made a profit. She came to bear bearings of what their children needed during the winter. She knew they needed the warm clothes for the winter storms that came. The winds blustering up the winds of miles of 40 miles an hour, that's not very pleasant. But she made it. She made it out of linen and other materials. And she did it for her family. She did it that her husband might be considered well in the gates of the street. People who sat in the gates of the street were important. They were like a council. And they led the people in the ways the town was to go. But the man who had a wife who went out into the field and a wife who bought materials and made the clothing for the family, he stood high in the mark because he had a woman that cared for what he did. And she wanted to make her husband to, to be the best man in the country. And so they prepared a way and she did the things that were pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And so when we think about being in the ways of God and doing things that are important unto God, we come down to the core of life, the family. They're part and parcel of life. And it's from the family that we learn how to do things. We learn how to be right in the things that we do. And so we think of a woman having a place in the life of the home, in the life of the children, steering them in the right directions. And so we come and celebrate a day once a year. This last week, stores 
have made offers to people to buy a dozen roses and we'll give you a dozen more and, <coughs> and mom will be happy about it all. I don't know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But they do have a reason to say, this means something to you or me. And so we think of what moms do. And I've preached on this from time now, I'm gonna tell you stories. I'm gonna talk about me and my relationships. And I wanna start with my mom. She got sick early in life, and had to be in bed for a long time. She took her father, who was a physician, out during the days when people were dying from pneumonia. And she remembered driving him home after he had visited a man and gave him the medicine that he needed to overcome the pneumonia. She remembers her father, whom I never knew, that he said, I'm not going out again until, until they take me out in the coffin. He could have saved his own life and ministered to others when he got more medicine, but he gave it to that man that he would live, but he spent his own death in doing it. My mother never forgot that. I don't believe she was ever bitter about it, but she remembered that Papa gave his most for a person. And my mother was that way. She wasn't the tallest person in the world. And after she got diabetes, she got shorter and shorter. But she never lost her zeal for God. She served the Lord in, in her church until she died in her sleep. And the whole church remembered her. They remembered what she had done. And the pastor asked me if I wanted to do part of the service, and I said, nope, not now. And he asked the people that had been in Andy Alice's class, raise your hands. And my wife turned around and looked, and she says, practically every hand is raised. She had her own ministry. She took care of the house. She probably wasn't the greatest cook in the world, but that didn't make any difference. She bought good food for us. Sometimes we struggled to get the food. Sometimes we ate leftovers. Nobody likes leftovers. But that's the way we did it, because that's the way it was. She walked to church because we didn't have a car wasn't a long distance, it was a little over a mile. But if the rain came down, the umbrella held the rain off. But she was so light, she practically got driven down the street one time and a neighbor saw her and came running across the street and picked her up and helped her into the house. But she had a love for God. And she always encouraged me in the way to consider doing something for God. And she was noted for that. And so she carried the load and she worked wherever she could. And she finally got a job in the post office. She kept that job until she retired. She lived her life, she lived in her home, until one night, on November 30th, 1982, she passed into heaven. And so she was faithful. She was honest in what she did. And more importantly, she loved God. And she wanted everybody to be faithful. If somebody came, visitor, a pastor came, to the church and nobody provided a meal, she opened her house. Sight on scene, opened it up. 
the people came and they seemed to enjoy their times. But I remember one time how the grace of God was just demonstrated in her life. The family and the rest of us came to the table to eat and we prayed and asked, passed the food and they took a helping of the meat and then realized that that was pork and they didn't eat pork. So they said to her, is this pork? And she said, yes, it is. Well, well, please give us the platter. We don't eat pork. So she gave us the platter, and I looked at my father, and he wasn't doing too well. He was a little angry here. And I don't know what I looked like, but I know I was mad. I mean, I was taught if I was eating something and I didn't like it and I was a visitor somewhere, you took three big gulps and you swallowed it. You took an I don't like it portion. It was the right thing to do. And then I saw my mom very gracefully saying, I'm sorry, I usually don't have pork, but I did this time. And she says, I don't know what I have to serve you. And then she said, well, you know what? I have some hamburger. I'll make you hamburgers if that's what you would, if you would eat that. And so they agreed to do that. And they ate the hamburgers. And I have, I have to tell you, at that point, I was ready to smash anything in their face. That's not fair. That's not the right thing to do. But I thought they should have taken it. And I admired my mom for being gracious. Becca, can you give me a drink? And so my mother died loving the Lord. And this last year, they had their 100th anniversary. And I realized that when I started going to church when I was two weeks old, the church was only 15 years old. It was small, and not many people came. But they followed God, and they grew. They grew until they became a large church. But mother never lost her zeal for God. And she followed the Lord until she died. That was her refuge. She made the most of what she had. And she gave her heart to God. And it proved to be the right thing. Then I think of my mother-in-law. Her name was Ruth. And she was a good cook. My wife tells me the reason I married her was that her mom was a good cook and she always invited me home. Right? No, that's not why I married her, but we'll deal with that another time. But you know, Mom always opened her home, and that's what I called her, as mom and dad. We were all family. My family was 1,700 miles away, and, and they were here. But all, Mom Magnuson always treated me like I was one of her sons. My father-in-law did the same. It made us a family. <coughs> and she was a God-fearing woman. She knew the Bible inside and out. And she was quick to pick up a moment that she might work in a testimony about God doing something. And the people would sit there and listen until she finished her story and moved on. She had love for her kids. Her kids meant everything to her. And my wife and... <clears throat> My sister-in-law, and she used to go shopping. And I remember my father-in-law would take him to the shopping place, and he'd take his little portable radio with him so he could go off and sit down somewhere and listen to the ball game. And he was happy to sit there for four hours while they went shopping. Oh, you disagree? No, I have facts in my head. But they would shop. 
And they'd come home with the good deals. One time they came home with a garment that I thought, who in the world would buy this? It was a coat of humpteen dozen colors, and it didn't look very good. But it was a winter coat for our son Raleigh to wear to school. He took the coat. He didn't say a word. He put it off every day, put it on every day, and went to school. And one day, we kind of brought up that coat. And my wife says, I don't know why mom wanted me to buy that coat. I thought it looked terrible. And then mom says, I didn't want you to buy that coat. So Raleigh says, I hated to wear it, but I did it. Uh, but that's a funny thing on my, part of mom. That was she thought there was good material and it could be used, and we used it in the wrong way. But nobody got mad at anybody. We just had an open time about it. That's the way we did. Mom and dad would invite the family home for Sunday dinners. And Christmas was always a smorgasbord at their house. And we had a time together. And we were family. But they too loved the Lord. And they served the Lord until they passed away. So I look back at the history of my mom and my mother-in-law, I have great honor in them. I'm proud to have been related to them. And then there was a young lady that I, I met in a, <coughs> in a wedding out in Buffalo. And I had great feelings for her. And one of, that's Buffalo, Minnesota, I'm sorry. And uh, the couple that I was willing, were living with uh, said, you know, I really think Ruth Magnuson would be good for you, Raleigh. I says, no, she's in St. Paul and I'm out here. No, that's not too far. And I'll tell you, you make a date to go to the Aqua Follies and we'll go along with you. So every Thursday I'd call long distance from Buffalo to to St. Paul, and she'd be gone. And then one day, she was home. And we arranged for a date. And <clears throat> so the date time came, and, and we went on the date. And then another time came along, and she needed an escort to a wedding that she was in, and so she asked me, and so my, my people at my home, they were rooting tooting for this thing. And then they decided that there was some fellow coming in from Chicago that was a real friend of the family. And so they said, now, Raleigh, you go down there to Minneapolis Floral, and you get the biggest vase of red roses and bring them home and put them on Marty's tel uh, piano so that, that guy will know that he's got He's got to fight with you to get her. And their family were friends of my in-law's family. And they were all root toot for Dick to marry her. And it had never worked out. It worked out the way we wanted it in the end. I proposed to her in, on October the 19th of 1955, across from Lake Phelan. And we were married June 15th of 1956. So next month, God willing, we celebrate 61 years of marriage. Thank you. She's had to endure a lot. She's gone through the bare cupboards, but she's never complained. She stood and made Swedish pancakes for hours to satisfy us. She cut up rooted beggars and potatoes and cooked them with sweet sausage so we could have golden fluffy potatoes and sweet sausage. That made it bearable. But I say this to my wife. She's been a great wife. We've traveled to distant places We've traveled to local places. We've been with family. We've been with friends. And she means much to me. She suffered through things. 
She's been faithful to pick me up downtown when I couldn't get on the bus because of my knee and I'd have to work late. She'd come down without complaining and take me home. And so I look at these ladies. They had an impact on my life. And they said good things about the things of God. And we followed in the way. So we look at God and his grace. He brings us along. And he brings us to the very place where there are people who have helped us. And there are people who have gone backwards to help us. And some were our relatives. So we say today, God has a place, an important place in life for women and for men. And he means for them to work out their lives to bring glory to Christ. So I thank all the mothers here. Thank you for bearing children and raising them in the admonition of the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness to the church and to God. You are to be respected for what you've done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray this day that we will rejoice that we're here with mothers who love you and they care for you. And I pray, God, that as children, we will remember our parents and the things that they have done for us. And so, God, go before us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.